As if we don't already have enough cutting boards, I wanted to make a couple more. But this time, I wanted to try something I've never done before. I saw some really unusual looking boards online, but I wasn't able to figure out how they were created. So I decided to experiment with it and see if I could figure it out on my own. And the folks over at Rockler said, huh, well that's neat. We'll give you a hand. So this is what we'll be doing. I'm going to try out the weaving technique and make a couple decorative cutting boards. I picked out some walnut boards that had some interesting character and got ready to use them only to find out that they were more wobbly than my legs after my annual visit to the gym. So I grabbed my sled and used a bunch of little shims to fill the gaps and to stop it from rocking side to side. Screwed in a cleat in the back. And since the board was longer than the sled, I had to squirt on some hot glue to hold the front in place. I shoved it through the planer a bunch of times and then got the top of the board flat and revealed some of that awesome looking figure. Then I could pop it off the sled, peel off the hot glue, and flatten the other side. Once both sides were surfaced, I could bring it over to the joiner and square up one edge. At this point, I ventured over to the bandsaw and I did a test cut on some scrap plywood. Well, for the most part, it left a really clean cut, hardly any bandsaw blade marks at all. So I really feel that with a gentle hand sanding, as well as if I fill in the kerf with a thin piece of wood, that I could get a solid glue joint. Uh, so that's really promising. The only thing I'm not sure about is whether or not I'm using the right bandsaw blade. I have a quarter inch blade in there right now, but you can see some of the areas like right here, um, right here, and further on down through the cut, there's some areas where the line just isn't really a perfect fluid, smooth, sweeping curve. So I'm wondering if I switch to a half inch blade if that could resolve it. So I'm going to give that a shot. I popped off the smaller blade and I put on one that was double the size. Then I grabbed that same piece of scrap and I did another test cut. All right, I may have figured it out here. So the thicker blade uh, was a little bit more aggressive in the cut, so I had just a tiny bit more hand sanding to do to smooth out these bandsaw blade marks. But once I fill in that kerf, I think we're gonna have a very smooth, gentle, flowing curve uh, which will look really nice once we start incorporating it into, uh, into the weave. So, all right, let's go forward with that. I put a clean edge on both boards using the table saw, and then I placed both of them side by side to see how they look together. I oriented them in a way where they'd complement each other, and I marked with a white pencil the areas that needed to be trimmed off, and I took care of that over at the miter saw. Well, I just wrapped up making some of these little sacrificial cutting boards that I will end up cutting up in, and weaving into my next project. So that ought to be interesting. They really turned out looking sharp, almost like little cheese boards or uh, runner boards or whatever. I mean, they're pretty nice as is. It's almost going to be a shame to cut them up. With things cut to size, I placed the first runner board on top of the walnut pieces to get an idea of where I wanted to begin weaving it in. The first step is to temporarily glue it on. So to do that, I used some painter's tape on both pieces and then I fixed them together with some CA glue. And I let it hang off the edge just a bit. Then I got really drunk and I drew a perfectly straight line down the board where I wanted to make my cut. And then I brought things over to the bandsaw to start making some sawdust. Once the first cut is done, I can pop the pieces apart, peel off the tape, and match up the two pairs. At this point, they fit together, but not perfectly. I need to fill the gap between them with a thin strip of wood that is the same width as the kerf on the bandsaw. So I make a quick cut, and I measure what the thickness needs to be. Then I grab my thin strip jig and I dial it in until I'm cutting strips that fit into the kerf perfectly.
At this point, I can crank out a whole bunch of them for the rest of the project. I give both pieces a light sanding to mitigate the bandsaw blade marks and to help ensure I get a good tight glue joint. I don't worry about getting it perfectly smooth, I just soften any real rough patches and I'm careful not to alter the shape of the curve. I squirt on a couple lines of glue, drop in one of the thin strips, and then clamp it up tightly to dry. The other runner board got glued on to the other walnut piece, and the same process was performed all over again. Then I pulled the pieces apart and I glued them up just the same as before. Now even the off cuts got glued up to each other because they'll get used again on the next series of cuts. Once everything was dry, I could take them all out of the clamps. Now I could take the smaller sections and eyeball a good spot for them to be stuck on and woven into the pattern. And when I figured out just where I wanted it, I'd dab on some CA glue, glue it into place, and head over to the bandsaw to make another cut. And then I did it again for the other half. Now we have four pairs of pieces to break apart, detape, and to glue up to their partners. All of this gluing was getting pretty messy, so I broke out my silicone project mat from Rockler so that I wouldn't have to scrape glue off my bench anymore. This thing is pretty handy. It keeps stuff from sliding around and the glue won't stick to it. Instead, it dries into clumps that are oddly satisfying to peel off and to sprinkle into a batch of granola that you can gift to your next door neighbor. All four pairs got squeezed into the clamps and then I went through and I scraped off all the glue so that I could inspect each seam and make sure that they were all super tight with no gaps. And then I could go take a nap until they were all dry. At this point, I'm left with two big pieces and two smaller ones. I decided to glue the two big pieces together to combine the weave. As for the smaller ones, I put them off to the side because I'll integrate them into another board once I'm done with this one. Well, this is looking pretty cool. I'm thinking, now that I have it glued up, I could kind of hide this seam a little bit if I put one more stripe, maybe like right down there, and then kind of have it curve back. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that, and then, uh, then we'll kind of see if it needs anything more. So I made the cut on the bandsaw, gave the edges a light sanding, and then glued them back together with a thin strip filling the gap. And just like before, I made sure to squeeze the heck out of it in the clamps and to inspect the glue line to make sure that the seam was good. I nipped off just a bit so that it would fit through my planer, and then I shimmed it up on a sled and fed it through until it was flat and at the desired thickness. And once it had lost all that weight, it was time to pretty up the bottom edge using the crosscut sled on the table saw. Now I didn't want just another boring rectangular cutting board, so I started drawing some curves on a scrap piece of wood until I found the shape that I liked. I figured I'd add an element of interest by giving the front end of the board a subtle curve. My gut has a subtle curve, and my wife still likes me, so she's bound to like this as well. I cut the shape out on the bandsaw and then I smoothed things out real nice using the disc sander. At this point, I could squarely center it on the end of the board and trace the edge. Once I had the location determined, I could stick on some tape, add some glue, and then fasten the two pieces together. Then, using this router bit set from Rockler, I could use a flush trim bit to nip off all the excess material as the guide bearing runs across the template. The template comes off, the tape peeled up, 
And then I can add an 8 inch round over on both sides with a trim router. These little Rockler bench cookies are awesome at holding things in place when doing things like this. As well as it makes it easy for me to sand while still being able to lose horribly at words with friends. So remember those two cutoffs we set aside for later? Well, now it's later. I stuck both of them together, I sketched on a guideline, and then ran a cut down through the both of them. And when I peeled them apart, I discarded the small scrap, and then I glued the two bigger pieces together into one weave. Then I grabbed a piece of live edge walnut, and I fastened the weave onto the inside edge of the board. One more cut with a bandsaw, and now I could glue them together to make another board. I got this one flattened and to the desired thickness using a planer, and then I could square off the ends using a miter saw. To address the live edge, I used a flap disc sander attachment on my angle grinder, and that cleaned it up pretty good. Added a small round over to all the other edges, and gave it all a good sanding. I dropped some dunce caps onto the little cookies, and then I was ready to start applying finish to these two boards. And for that, I'm just using a mineral oil and a beeswax blend. Well, this turned out looking pretty cool. I love the character of the sapwood and the live edge. And the different colors of all the woven in bits, they add a ton of interest. Not bad for a board made from cutoffs, right? Now let's finish the other one. Yes, sir. That is fantastic. Just look at the figure of that walnut. And the crisp, high contrast of the flowing lines really give this board an artistic feel. And the curve on the end definitely sets it apart from the typical shaped boards. All in all, I love it. This is definitely one of the prettiest boards I've ever made. Well, this weaving technique is pretty fun and easy. My brain is already buzzing with ideas on how I can use it in other projects as well. Hey, thanks for watching. I sure hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, and you feel I've earned it, give the video a like and drop a comment down below. And if you're not subscribed yet, be sure to hit that button too. Who knows, maybe I'll send you a complimentary batch of homemade granola. <laughs> See you next time. Oh crap. Oh, wait, I forgot to sand. Ooh, that would have been bad. I was wondering why I got so dusty running that cut. I had the dust collector going. Except it was hooked up to the joiner. <laughs> Idiot. Oh, that's not gonna work. I'm missing... Ah, crap! I did it wrong! Gotta pull it back a little bit more. Dumbo.